Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we delve into the captivating story of Spyridon Spiro Valences, a towering figure in the Greek mob and American organized crime history. Founding his own outfit, the Valences organization, in the late 1980s, Valences confronted formidable adversaries, including the likes of John Gotti. Despite encountering daunting obstacles, Valences's resilience and determination enabled him to expand his organization's reach across New York. As the 1990s dawned, the Valences organization emerged as a formidable player in the evolving criminal landscape, filling the void left by the waning influence of the Mafia. Through strategic alliances, Valences cemented his legacy, leaving an enduring imprint on American organized crime history. However, his swift downfall mirrored his meteoric rise, as former allies turned against him, taking him off the streets. Valences was born in a region just outside the capital city of Greece, Athens, in 1932. He spent the majority of his childhood and teenage years in this area, with little known about his life during this time. However, he and his family eventually decided to emigrate to the United States in the early 50s, initially settling down in Boston. Living here for only a few years, the family soon moved to the more diverse city of New York. Settling in the Astoria section of New York often referred to as Greek Town, Valences, and his family found themselves surrounded by other Greek families who had recently immigrated to the United States. The population of Greek immigrants in the area continued to grow throughout the 50s. This provided an opportunity for Valences's father to establish a local Greek-inspired cafe in the neighborhood to support his family. While Valences was said to help with the family business from time to time, he showed little interest in becoming a cafe owner like his father, preferring instead to spend time with other Greek teens, seeking excitement. This led Valences to venture into the criminal world, participating in small-scale criminal activities such as dice games, theft, and extortion. As Valences and his associates delved deeper into the criminal underworld, he became associated with Pete the Greek Kurakos, the then boss of the Greek mob. Becoming associated with Kurakos marked a significant turning point for the now 20-year-old Valences. Kurakos wielded considerable influence throughout Astoria and was reputed to be the final authority on crime in the area. Serving as his official driver from the late 50s into the 60s, Valences gained insight into the diverse array of businesses controlled by the Kurakos organization. These enterprises primarily consisted of various illegal gambling operations scattered across Astoria. Working closely alongside Kurakos, Valences gradually became involved in and assumed control of some of the crew's major operations. In addition to these illicit ventures, the Kurakos organization owned multiple restaurants and social clubs in the area, underscoring the importance of legitimate business ownership. However, the ownership of these establishments and the overall operation had strong ties to the Italian-American mafia in the region. Despite the Italian mafia's dominance over crime in New York, Kurakos retained control over Astoria. In order to remain in control of this region and to avoid potential conflicts, Kurakos forged a long-standing partnership with the Mafia. Allegedly, this partnership involved the Greek Mafia funneling a portion of their proceeds from illegal activities to the Lucchese family. Christopher, Christy Tick, Fernari purportedly acted as the representative for the Lucchese family, forming enduring relationships not only with the Greek Mafia but also with Valences himself. By nurturing key connections and enhancing his reputation throughout Astoria, Valences ascended to the second-highest position within the Greek mob as the 70s approached. This position poised Valences to seamlessly assume power after Kurakos's passing in the early 70s. After assuming the leadership of the Greek mob, now rebranded as the Valences organization, life reportedly continued much as before. The organization remained deeply entrenched in illicit gambling operations across the Astoria region, using the proceeds to invest in legitimate enterprises. Valences aimed to expand his organization's influence, increasing the number of associates to over 30 men and extending their reach into Queens and Brooklyn. Despite these expansions, Valences maintained close ties with the Lucchese family. In a later interview with renowned crime reporter Jerry Capace, he claimed to be paying over $100,000 monthly to the Lucchese family illustrating the substantial profits the Valences organization was generating. By consistently making these payments, the organization continued to flourish, albeit with changes in the Lucchese family's representatives. In the late 80s, leadership changes within the Lucchese family saw Anthony Casso and Vic Amuso assuming control. 
Valenzas then redirected his payments to another high-ranking member, Pete, Fat Pete, Kyoto. Despite this transition, Valenzas continued to reap significant profits from his expanding ventures across New York. However, tensions arose when Valenzas allegedly received permission from Kyoto to expand his gambling network into territory controlled by the Gambino family. This incursion angered members of the Gambino family, prompting the now infamous response from John Gotti, where he would be caught on a wiretap saying, quote, you tell this punk, I, me, John Gotti, will sever your head off. Valenzas would be justifiably concerned after hearing this comment and would place blame on Kyoto, as he believed he gave him permission. However, Valenzas would escape serious repercussions from this attempted expansion, as the conflict was said to be resolved through a series of meetings between the two groups. The situation remained relatively calm until 1988, when a prominent gangster, Sami the Arab Nalo, began encroaching on territories controlled by the Mafia and Valenzas's organization. This sparked unrest among organized crime figures, who would look to take out the brash gangster. This would culminate in a deadly encounter in a travel agency owned by Valenzas. Nalo was said to arrive at the agency to have a meeting with Valenzas. However, Valenzas would not be at the agency, allegedly opting to speak with Nola over the phone. While on this phone call, two men would rush in, shooting Nalo several times. Being fatally shot, Nola would tell authorities that Valenzas was responsible, before passing away. Valenzas denied involvement in this murder, yet this incident signaled the beginning of his downfall. In 1992, Valenzas and most of his associates were arrested, facing charges including murder, gambling, and extortion, with Valenzas separately charged for Nalo's murder in 1988. Facing these serious charges, Valenzas began preparing for his upcoming legal battle. The longtime mobster was alleged to have been offered multiple deals during this time, all of which he turned down, opting to go to trial instead. However, members of the mafia he was associated with did not choose to stand trial like Valenzas. Both Pete Kyoto and Casso became government informants. Kyoto officially became an informant after being shot 12 times and provided testimony in multiple trials, including against Valenzas. Kyoto first claimed that Valenzas ran an extensive gambling operation in Astoria. He also implicated Valenzas in the Nola murder, stating that he played a pivotal role in the plot. With this testimony, Valenzas was found guilty on the original charges of gambling and extortion but initially faced a hung jury in the Nola murder trial. However, after another trial, he was found guilty of this murder, despite the prosecution not being allowed to enter Nola's dying confession as evidence. With a final conviction, Valenzas was sentenced to life in prison. While in prison, he conducted the previously mentioned interview with Jerry Capace, where he stated, quote, Pete Kyoto set me up. In the whole world, I'm the guy he hates the most. He framed me. He went on to claim that the true reason the hit was ordered was that Nola did not pay Kyoto back the $100,000 he borrowed from him. Despite constantly denying his involvement in this murder, Valenzas was unable to successfully appeal this sentence, resulting in him serving his life sentence. He continues to serve this sentence to this day and is now 89 years old. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on the channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. If there are any topics you would like to see covered in future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below, if not, I will see you next time with another story from the underworld.